Hello there everybody, Richie Time here and today I am starting a new series of 5NL speed poker. The reason I'm doing this is because most of the players who I try to reach out to with my coaching services I'm just going to give up here with the King 9 suited once it takes a check call line on the flop usually implies with a pre-flop raise that this guy may not should be saw it before the video started he min raised and then he started check calling usually implies he has some kind of made hand um, I'm not going to try and bluff somebody with a made hand at these games so just a while we just had the A7 there we go <laughs> could have worked against that but never mind um, yeah the reason I'm doing this is most of the players that I look to work with are playing in these games some playing a little bit higher but lots and lots of players are playing 2 and L, 5 and L, 10 and L that come to me hoping to get some help so I think it's only right that I make games that relate to sorry make videos that relate to the the games that the people who need my help play in rather than playing at stakes sometimes six or ten times higher so I'm going to play these games in the way that I would try and teach other players to play these games there's not much point playing a 30 in our game trying to play it like you would play at 5 and now because it just doesn't always work and uh, it's not relevant it's playing 30 in our games is not relevant to 5 and L players so that's why we're doing this there will be lots and lots of videos made on this because now winter's coming I want to start to be a lot busier again I'm starting to get more free time less time to um, less time is needed to having a social life because the weather's horrible I'm going to be in the house more. I'm going to be, have a lot more time on my hands to rededicate myself to poker. Not rededicate myself, that would be the wrong way to put it. But you know, when summertime comes, even the most dedicated players like myself, my hours per month drop from playing or being involved in poker from, say, 120 hours a month down to 70 hours per month just because you have other commitments in the summer have family commitments um, more social engagements <coughs> all those kind of things but now winter's coming those things kind of slow down we can really get stuck into poker for the next five or six months and that's what I fully intend to do I want to be busy 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 with working and coaching and this is the best way to do that and we're not going to call a 10 big blind 3 bet with the pocket 2's I know lots of regulars do set mine in 3-bet pots. It's really not something that I'm into. Um, if you were to have made that 40 cents, I would start considering it. But um, I think putting 10% of my stack in pre-flop to try and hit a set, it's not really, it's not for me. Maybe, maybe, maybe we just in so make enough money by doing it, but I'm not sure we do. I'm not even sure would people three bet a little bit wider these days. So I implied odds aren't the same. I mean back in the olden days, say the olden days, it wasn't that long ago. If you got three bet people would usually had kings, queens or aces and occasionally ace king. So um I'm gonna isolate this to thirty because of the two limpers. I think now there's just way too much high cards involved in there, king, queen, ace, queen basically I think um, there's only 50% or less chance that they have a large pair maybe even less than 50% chance they have a large pair and if they don't have a large pair a lot of our implied odds go right out of the window so um, that's why I don't choose not to do it wow we flop quads um, I'm not one for slow playing normally I'm not one for advocating slow playing but when we flop quads in a three bet pot there's literally nothing anybody else can have so we just need to be checking um, I guess now we can just make a small bet because some draws have come out so you never know somebody might have a 10 somebody might have a 9 
could have flush draws or straight draws right now. This guy, um, Russian Bog, has checked back, so we're going to value bet our two aces. And we're going to value bet the river again with our three aces. We're going to make it small enough so he can call with King X. We don't need to be making it much bigger than that there. The bigger we make it, the harder it's going to be him to, for him to call with a, the maid hand. Sorry, with a king or something like that. Obviously, if he had a worse ace, it would have called a lot more. Um, what size do I want to use here and why? Still, it's really hard. Every draw is missed. So we kind of, if we value bet, we're going to be value betting to try and get called by a 9 or a 10. So I think this sizing is fine. We could argue that checking may be better there to try and get value from his miss straights and miss flushes. Um, but I don't think people are bluffing as often as we think in these games. So I'd rather just try and get some clean value. It's really hard to get paid there though. Quads are really nice to have but no, they're not a particularly profitable hand unless you're in with somebody who's just a nutter or you completely cool as somebody. So don't worry about when you get quads and you don't make much money, don't think what did I do wrong? You didn't do very much wrong. You probably just didn't your opponents just didn't have anything they could call you with. Quite often you see posts on forums, people send hands to me, look at flop quads. Um did I bet too much and they bet I don't know two thirds pot. No, you didn't. Maybe you could, could have not bet at all and just allow your opponent to catch up a little bit. But usually when we have quads, it's hard for anyone to have anything. So if it's hard for anyone to have anything, your bets aren't going to get called too often. That's the problem with quads. It's nice. We're virtually unbeatable. But um, we're virtually uncallable too. You'll notice I'm just 3xing all positions here. I'm going to play 13 l 15 l 100 and l. I usually raise smaller, but I think the 3 betting in 5 and l is just isn't a problem. So if it's not a problem, if people are calling too much and not 3 betting enough, it stands to reason that 3xing is absolutely fine. I'm going to see bet here with our backdoor straight draw and backdoor flush draw. Not going to isolate with the 8 9 off. Those suit cards aren't really a particularly playable hand, in my opinion. We like suitedness not because we're all suited junkies that want to make flushes, but suitedness gives us lots of opportunities to be aggressive post flop with backdoor equity, where we, it's, we don't flop anywhere near as much backdoor equity or equity in general with unsuited cards and we called the 8-6 suited on the button because we knew we were going to flop a straight but also because it's a very playable hand and I'm not expecting to get squeezed very much at all at 5 and L. so I'm not going to get squeezed it means we can see the flop with some more speculative holdings unfortunately we flop a hand we, we flop the 9-5-7 and we flop a straight I think we can consider ourselves quite unlucky our opponent just check folds and um, again there's no reason to check back there's lots and lots of made like earlier there's lots and lots of made hands he can be check calling with remember the hand right at the start of the video someone raised a7 then just check called with it that kind of thing happens all the time so we just need to bet start building a pot with our made hands and again if our opponents fold yeah, they just fold nothing much we can do about it As you can see, these games are very passive. We've been playing for nearly 10 minutes. And we've been 3-bet once so far. So when you are getting 3-bet in these games, maybe not if, so much if you're playing on a site like PokerStars, where I would imagine the games are somewhat more aggressive. Um, when you are getting 3-bet in these games, 
usually going to be someone ripping a lot of strength. That said, we have two queens in the small blind. It's just pretty much a mandatory for called forbet, and if one of these guys has to queue for two queens, well, we just have to go broke. It's just a cooler situation. We check raise our tens here. Um, he probably just has aces or kings here, but he can have ace king too, of course. So we just have to go with it, and he just have the kings, whatever. And that's just unfortunate. But I mean, what can we do there? Sometimes when we got two queens, we run right into the top of someone's range. We're just going to have to pay them off. There's nothing much we can do. Um, not happy with my size in here on the flop. We could have made it slightly bigger and then jammed the turn. Well, I guess we just have to go and get it over three streets now if we can. And we don't. We fail to get the money in, but not much we can do there. To raise your hand for value, then bet it for value. The nine shouldn't really change too much on the turn. Yeah, King Queen gets there, but whatever. If he's got King Queen, we just got to go ahead and pay him off. It's yeah, so losing a bay in there with the with the two queens. When that happens to you, and you kind of know they probably just have aces or kings don't beat yourself up over it that's not a mistake because even in these games people are going to sometimes have two jacks and ace king there plenty enough of the time to make getting queens in preflop absolutely fine yeah when, when you do it you're like oh god i know he's got aces or kings no one ever five bet bluffs in these games and you're right they probably don't five bet bluff very often especially versus called four bets but um, at the same time, people will have enough pocket jacks, um, maybe pocket tens, what seems unlikely, and definitely plenty of ace king to make that play fine. So don't think to yourself, what oh, when a mistake there, knew he had it. You didn't know he had it. You strongly suspected that they had it, but they also have enough other things in their range to make our play fine. And when you run at the top of someone's range, it's just unfortunate. And that's just part of poker. The biggest mistake you can make from that is to then go on and let that affect your confidence or affect your play in future hands. That's a real mistake there. Right, Queens, are you going to be nice to us today or are you going to be nasty? I guess we'll soon find out. Now, this would be somewhat different if we get far bet here. His rage would be that little bit stronger, but even so, we would still be going with our hand again. Now that would be much closer to being a, a, a three bet and a four to a four bet. Because, just because he's open from middle position. The last one was like button, small blind, big blind. This is middle position, so it does make somewhat of a difference to his range. Um, yeah, queens are not being friendly with us tonight, but never mind. Such is life. Now before when we said we don't three we don't set mine in three bet pots. This is very different because look at the difference in his sizing. It's significantly different. Now we're only being asked to put seven blinds in pre flop of four blinds more than that original raise. So happy to set mine here. And just be careful that we don't pay off too much post flop on these types of boards. I mean we kind of have to call ones on this board. It's a pretty good flop for our hand. But if I face more aggression on the turn, if I, if we call here and he bets 18 90 cents on the turn we're just going to give our hand up particularly on that card because he was pluffing with an ace king ace queen type hand he's now just got it so we're going to give up and just go away sam bell b i remember him from playing much higher wonder if he's doing down here um we're going to bet here if we have, do have the best hand we can get value from 8x club draws straight draws and then um, if we get raised we have a particularly easy fold <clears throat> now we have a double good shot but the 10 fits in with a lot of his range for check calling 
he may have a weak queen if he had a hand like jack 10 he's now ahead of us if he had jack 9 he's ahead of us 9 7 pretty much everything's got there with that 10 if we were ahead apart from his one pairs and now we're just going to fold Not a good flop, a king queen suited. Not too many ways we can continue here. And we could float. I mean, if we had a diamond, if one of these twos was a diamond, we could consider just taking one off and then making some plays on some some good turns for us. But as it is, pretty dry, low pet board. We're just gonna we're just gonna make a. Pretty solid fold. Just make a small C bet with that right here for some very, very, very thin value. But also just to collect any dead money in the pot. If we use another hand like Jack Queen here, Jack Ten, uh, sorry, not so much Jack Ten, but Jack Queen, um, Ace nine, all, all kind of things like that that can just stuck out on us on the turn. If we allow him to just stuck out for nothing, we may as well have him fold those hands. Once he check calls on an incredibly dry board, he probably just has a pair. And we're ahead of some of his pairs. We're behind to most of them, so we're not going to babble the turn. We're probably not going to pay off the river. We, if I had a better kicker, if I had like an ace eight. I would absolutely go for something value here, but um, most of his eights are doing better than us too. Well, a lot of his eights are doing better than us, so um, we're just going to check and hope to win. And he had the king jack; he would never fold in that hand. Yeah, so this session, as you can tell, we're just kind of running into the top of people's ranges we're maybe down who knows 150 blinds or more this session and i don't feel like we've done anything wrong it's just one of those sessions where uh, the boards haven't really cooperated with us or we've just been pipped that's going to happen quite a lot in poker games now where people just play much better than they played a long time ago and there's and the regular to recreational player ratio is not particularly favourable you do need to if you have sessions where you don't run too good you're usually going to get you know smashed for it because people are just playing much better the, the overall standard of people's play is much better so <coughs> when we are in second place a lot it's usually costing us you know quite a few chips that can't be helped the, the way to counter that is to make sure that when, when it's when it's and we're the ones with the slightly better hand, which we're going to have more often than not as a better player. We counter that by making sure we don't miss value. We don't miss any value spots. We make good bets. We make good sizes. We make good raises. And all those kinds of things. When you're just second best all the time, like with the kings versus, with the queens versus the kings. Um, when we flop second pair to people, it's like passively played top pair, etc. Those things happen to everyone. It's our job to minimize our losses the times where we're not in great shape and maximize the wins when we are that's that's where being a good poker player comes in and then having edge is just in the discipline of just losing those few big binds less on average when we're then um, when it's not our day and making those few big binds extra when it is our day that's what goes into making a winning player rather than a losing player or a or a break-even player. So it's important not to get disheartened when, when it's not your day and start playing poorly. I've, I've worked with lots and lots of players who are technically very capable of playing higher levels, but emotionally they just they just don't deal well with negative results. And quite often they have a session that for a good player 
may be a minus two by in session and they turn those those sessions into minus six and minus seven by in sessions um if you are a player that's doing that you really are going to find it quite hard to to make poker pay but that's probably one of the biggest leaks of lots of micro states players is not managing their losses we're going to just try and make a very small bluff raise here it's a, it's a good board to see but it's dry it's relatively unconnected so he's going to see about this board with quite a big part of his range I would imagine so we're just going to try and make him fold knowing that we have a backdoor flush draw and a backdoor straight draw if he does stick around it's not much to cling on to there's not much hope with the backdoor draws but it's better than not having them if you're going to want to bluff in some spots like that on boards where you feel your opponents are see betting just a little bit too often backdoor equity is usually um or having bad directory is usually a good place to start doing it because at least when you're wrong and they are see in a value hand um you are going to suck out more often than you are without having bad door equity which is important I'm going to call here because of his stack size um trying let's just try and let some more people in the pot if we three bet versus some guy playing 50 big blind stack versus he's under the gun from the cutoff it's not that hard to put us on a pretty strong hand so he's going to call and disguise our hand strength going to call here with our open ender hope to hit we do not there's nothing at all to be scared of in this spot so he's going to call and just let him keep value betting worse hands or bluffing if that's what he's doing So how much do we need to bet here to allow us to shove the river? We bet 50 cents. He calls. He's going to put 179 in the pot. He's going to have 178 left. So we go for the 55 cent bet. This is just under pot for the river. If he sticks around, which he didn't do, so never mind. No real problem with that. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to start making... <laughs> videos again now at least two a week I'm hoping for three a week I'm gonna try and make a video most mornings I'm not at work because the games I play in don't really go very much in the mornings it gives me something productive to do hopefully it gets me back to producing lots of content for my YouTube channel which I've kind of mothballed for the summer but now the summer's gone um we're going to try and relight the fire in the youtube channel if you're not already a subscriber please do consider subscribing there's going to be lots and lots of nano stakes content coming out of here for the next probably until let's say end of march there's a good chance how many months is that november december january february march at least two videos a week now it's a good chance I'm going to be producing at least 30 videos in the next four or five months so please do subscribe there's lots and lots of content willingly freely admit it's nowhere near as good as the content you get from paid subscription sites but if you are a micro states player on a budget um, I do think they have a decent amount to offer for people who don't have much of a bankroll, don't have much expendable cash to use on expensive subscriptions to video sites. I think it's a good place just to get you started. And then if you start making some money, then you absolutely should invest in yourself and go and subscribe to training sites. I would personally recommend Grinder School for micro states players on a budget because it's that's exactly it's aimed exactly at you if you have a bit more money to spend i would guess run it once would be the place to go for sure and um, although that is quite an expensive place they do offer some budget subscriptions which are very good 
You can see by our Royal Flush draw here. How awesome would it be to make a Royal Flush in a video? Right, so we get raised here. It's the tempting thing to do here is just shovel all the money in. And let's just talk about this for a moment. But if this player here, this Rami, is doing this for value, then we have no fold equity. If we have no fold equity, then um, jamming makes no sense. But we have 12 outs to the absolute nuts. And we might have some fold equity, or he could have a worse draw. So this Bob is slightly different. Um, I wouldn't jump up because we have such a strong draw to the nuts. If we had like a, a non-nut flush draw here, you say we thought we only had flush outs, jamming would be bad. But the fact we're drawing to the nuts in two ways, I think makes jamming the right play. But don't always go nuts here. We don't need much fold equity, so jamming's fine. But in spots where you're semi-bluffing and you need a bit more fold equity, it probably isn't the best spot to jam. And we don't get there. And that's kind of a key component of a semi-bluff, is the bluff part actually working a decent amount. When we get called there, we know we're going to have, you know, we're going to we're going to make the nuts, you know, a decent amount of the time there. If you if you have a non-nut draw, then semi-bluffing in that spot where we've been bet called and then raised is significantly worse because people could just have you. Uh, they can be doing that with a better draw than yours and then you're in really rough shape but the fact we had 12 solid outs to the nuts jamming's fine even though you know you're probably not going to get very many folds at all because we have such a strong draw we don't need many folds when we when we have a weaker draw where we'd prefer a few more folds then I think um, I think just calling might be better there just to try and make our draw a little bit cheaper because last thing we want to do there, say we had an 8 high flush draw instead we get it in there against a higher flush draw, we're in rough shape, really rough shape this is quite unfortunate I don't want to pay off here I mean, we've been had our We had our three bet cold call from the blind and then someone just donked for full pot into us. But I mean, yeah, we're actually going to pay him off. I mean, of course, he can have a queen. We can be in rough shape. We can't possibly legislate for somebody having the queen eight there. Um, that could easily just have been somebody with two tens or something like that. Who's just in no ace, no king on the flop and gone for it. Yeah, it's been a rough session for us. Um... But I don't feel like we've made any mistakes. Maybe, maybe the jacks there was a fault. But I don't think it is. Really don't think it is. Um, if we're playing games where people are playing badly enough to cold call with the Queen 8 there in the big blind versus under the gun and cut off in a 3-bet pot, we probably don't want to be folding to donk bets versus that type of player very often. So yeah, it's just been one of those sessions where we've had lots of interesting hands but they've unfortunately all just been just about second best when that happens you are going to get slaughtered but then uh, you need to keep a really positive demeanor and you need to keep focused on the things you're trying to ch achieve when you're playing which is find lots of good spots against weaker opponents and just trust long term that your ranges are going to be better than theirs so therefore you can just make money in the long term this hasn't been one of those days. Never mind. <laughs> Look, we are now approaching the half hour point, which is usually the point in the video where I cut it off. So we're just going to sit out of our next big blind and um, bid you all good day. Hopefully we'll get a 
interesting hand to finish on. Doesn't always work out that way. No, <coughs> if you have reached this far in the video and you've enjoyed it, please do subscribe to the channel. Please do visit my website. It's just literally one page where it does tell you a little bit more about me. Um, please also click the micro grinder link in the description as that will have uh, that links me to that links you to a page where lots of people I've worked with in the past have made some comments about how they felt about working with me if you are thinking of getting some coaching from me um, it's a good place to go just to just to get some feedback on how people have felt about the time spent with me we're going to call here on this flop and probably fall to a double barrel and if he has two nines, two eights, that's that he's going to see about this board a lot of the time. Um, two eights just gets there, but never mind. I mean, obviously, if it's a jack, aces, kings, queens, he's going to see bet two. But, um, I think tens were ahead plenty enough to call there. No value in betting here, really. I guess we could maybe get some thin value from two nines, from some flush draws, etc. But um, we don't really don't want to face a race here we probably just have the best hand if we do have the best hand probably not going to get drawn out on too often so the worst case I see here would obviously be a king queen or an ace we may pay the river if he bets small enough if he bets more than half pot we'll probably just fold though And now the question is, do we go up with some thin value? What can call a bet here? What can it? What plays this way that's that we're beating? I think we can just bet here. You might just have a hand like two sevens and pairs off if we bet small enough. I mean, you could also just have a weak jack that's just going into showdown mode, and we value on ourselves. But I think better, I think not betting there would be missing value for sure the way he's played his hand we just have the best hand most of the time and if we think we have the best hand and we're on the river and it's checked to us betting is usually the best option um, that is possibly one of the worst flops we can see it think about his calling range of the buttons pocket pair suity connectors two high cards um, the only thing we get into fold at this point is two high cards, of which we're ahead of some of them anyway. And he's not necessarily going to bluff with, so we're just going to check fold at this point. And if we get bluffed by King Queen or something, well, we get bluffed by King Queen. Not really much we can do about it. And there we go. There is the end of the session. I do hope you've enjoyed it. See me play some some of the stakes that you play more often. There'll be plenty more content coming like this over the next five months so please do subscribe to my channel thank you very much for watching take care everybody and we'll be back with another video probably on friday bye for now